Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so very much for um, joining us today for our presentation, Design at RISD. Um, I'm really just moderating the presentation and introducing it. Um, I have Dean Sherry Fultonier here um, today to give this amazing presentation about our design majors here at RISD. Um, she is a Dean of Division of Architecture and Design, and, and, um, and I will be here as an admissions officer and um, as an alum of RISD, I studied illustration. I will be here to hang out in the background and to uh, field any questions during the presentation. And then we will make sure to leave time at the end of the presentation um, for, for those questions as well. Um, all right, so Sherry, I'll pass it to you. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for dropping in and, and uh, taking some time to learn more about the architecture and design division. Um, I'm Sherry Fultonier, as uh, you were just introduced. I'm, uh, I'm also a professor of landscape architecture, and um, that is a graduate-only program at RISD, but I will tell you a little bit more about that at the very end. Um, I'm going to jump right to sharing my screen with you because I have some images about, um, let's see. Um, and Sherry, actually, while you go ahead and get that ready, I just want to take a moment and make absolute sure, certain that everybody can hear. So my apologies that I didn't ask um, that of everyone right off the bat, but if you guys can hear us and see the presentation, can you just go ahead and enter in the chat window, the chat box? Um, yes, or you can go ahead and raise your hand. Um, I see, okay, everyone's saying yes, perfect. Oh, good, sounds great, I love that. So I see hands raised, wonderful. Um, and also just so you know, um, along the bottom there, there's a chat box that says Q&A. So for your questions, please direct your questions to the Q&A chat box and I will be looking there. I'll also look in the regular chat box, but mostly there. So anyway, Sherry, back to you. <laughs> Okay, and please do ask questions. I'm sure you're going to have some. This is going to be pretty conversational. I'm, I'm going to tell you my uh, Dean's view of the division, and um, I hope that will give you an appetite to go to later presentations that drill down more specifically into different departments. So the Division of Architecture and Design at RISD is seven departments. I think you probably all know if you looked at our website that for undergraduates, you all come in and take a foundations year. Uh, that's the same for everybody. It's a mixture of 2D and 3D spatial dynamics. Um, so that once you be, choose a major, everybody at RISD is moving forward with a really great foundation, but also uh, you will have Matt, all of the other students come in at the same time that you do, so that even if you go into one of these majors or one of the fine arts majors, you'll, you're still going to have a really great and um, long lasting uh, interdisciplinary dialogue with all of the other students there. So the division in um, uh, architecture and design includes uh, the departments that you see on the screen. There's apparel, which is can be called fashion in other schools, architecture, furniture design, graphic design, industrial design, interior architecture, and then there's landscape architecture, which as I said, is a grad only program, but I'm including it here because they do offer classes that you can take as an undergraduate. I'll tell you more about that at the very end. Um, let me see why my Screen is not advancing, here we go, there we go. So we'll start with apparel design. This is Lisa Morgan, she's the department head. RISD's organized into departments and each one has a department head, um, typically who's a practitioner in that discipline. Um, Lisa has written extensively about apparel and um, she's currently guiding the program. Um, it's uh, through a, a new focus on questions of identity, questions of sustainability in fashion, and questions of social equity and justice. So what you will see in this work, I think, um, uh, is a mixture of really strong technical skills that are necessary for to learn for uh, apparel and fashion design, and a um, predicated on a very um, a, a deep and, as you can see, very lively 
um, inquiry into identities and into different cultures of expression, into the role that the body plays and that in, um, in its engagement with design and the role that apparel plays in establishing and communicating identity. So this is uh, Sahara Clemens in her work from the past year. As you can see, there's a lot of experimentation with different materials and with, as I said, this interplay of the body with apparel. Um, there's also in the department a new, uh, well, I'll let this play and then I'll tell you more about it when I'm not competing with the sound. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about what you saw, the department has habitually had a conventional runway um, presentation of uh, seniors work, which is the culmination of their time in the program. And it's recently moved into um, teaching students how to do expressive short films uh, for of their work and as a way of sharing it more broadly and entering into the dialogue that happens on um, the many forms of digital media that the world of fashion and apparel engages. So what you just saw there was a, an assemblage of individual film clips that uh, each student made one of their final collection. And uh, this one condensed those into one presentation, but um, it's been a really exciting shift for the program uh, as they begin to explore new ways that fashion is finding its way out into the world. Um, sticking with the A's, I'm going alphabetically. Architecture is one of our largest departments. This is Amy Culper, who's the department head. She's a historian and a theoretician. And um, the department, um, one enters this as a sophomore and progresses up through a series of core studios and courses that balance all of the technical um, skills necessary to the practice of architecture with a heavy emphasis on um, ideation and iterative design process and on the conceptual underpinnings of the practice of architecture. So students find very many different ways through the program. Um, most of them in some way are speculative and testing the direction of architecture. This is a core studio that looked at a proposition for a new design for the Nature Lab at RISD, understanding green architecture, green walls, living systems, and sustainability in architectural design. Um, this is uh, another core studio. It's an urban scale. Um, investigation of the way um, the ecological systems of cities and the way that architecture participates within them. Um, there's, um, as you go forward, uh, then on into advanced studios, the studios have then, you, you've, uh, students have acquired a set of fundamental skills that allow you to have the representational capacity to express your ideas, but also to explore them uh, within the formal, spatial, or conceptual premises that you're, you're investigating. 
um, the people who teach this. There's a wide faculty of both full-time faculty and visiting faculty. So in any given year, you'll be working with core faculty as well as a number of visitors. Um, another advanced studio that is looking uh, at this point primarily on representational techniques. And then I wanted to show you this because every department at RISD has annual um, has triennial shows. So they're not annual, but they, they cycle either in a two year or three year um, circuit. And um, this is one of our many galleries. This is the Woods Geary Gallery where undergraduate shows happen. And this is one of the shows from two years ago. Um, what you're seeing is a set of scale models of iconic buildings from around the globe that students have studied and then um, made models. Uh, some are done by 3D printing, some are hand constructed, but it's they're um, actually very expressive of the interest of the program of looking at the full global uh, ex architecture expression across cultures and um, seeing what we can all learn from them in this dialogue of moving architecture into the future. Um, Finally, thesis or degree project is the way you would you terminate any of the majors. Um, it's a um, either a six month or a full year investigation of a topic is uh, largely of your own choosing, but it's done in um, collaboration with your advisor and um, some secondary mentors and advisors. Uh, this is Gabrielle Schmidt's uh, thesis project. Um, another thesis project that was investigating um, understandings of cities through um, um, experience, visual experience of transit. Um, and I think I'll leave architecture there. there uh, there'll be another presentation ex uh, expressly about the department if you have more questions about it. Um, furniture design. Uh, Furniture design at RISD um, is a studio practice. Uh, it's, it, it does dovetail into industrial practices, but it's uh, very much still a program um, that accentuates individual expression in the design of furniture. Christopher Spies is the department head, a furniture maker in his own right. Um, and the BFA program, um, has um, the same basic structure as other programs at RISD in that you come out of foundations and then move through a series of core and elective courses until you hit your senior degree project. Um, uh, this is a, a chair by Eli Silver. I'm showing it to you because I thought it really captures some of the, um, both the technical learning in furniture, but also some of the themes of um, looking at novel materials for furniture, uh, beginning to test the limits of the tectonics of the way a chair might be made. Um, this is another example where they're drawing from very classic techniques, yet moving them into a new territory with the expression of the chair. This um, particular spindle chair um, has um, it, uh, multiple techniques here. There's turning, there's carving, there's bent wood. Uh, technologies that the students would have had to master to do this. Um, and then this is a very different way of perceiving a chair, uh, upholstery techniques and engagement with textiles and engagement with novel materials. Um, I think this one, uh, table begins to give you a sense of the opportunities for handwork and carving and expressiveness while still uh, engaged in a, an inquiry about uh, traditional furniture practices. And then this one is an example of working in metals and um, representative of the uh, sort of breadth of the program of what you would take on. Uh, bent lamination process in this um, project. And I, this is one of my personal favorites, the, uh, the mirror. I also wanted to show you this because the uh, furniture department has historically shown uh, student work at the Salone 
um, that's uh, in Milan, Italy. Uh, so this was a project from two years ago that was in collaboration with a, another designer, um, Mabeo, and um, this is the collection. Uh, it was exhibited in a small palazzo, um, hence the um, very beautiful tile floor you're seeing. Uh, but the exhibition itself was completely designed by with the furniture faculty in collaboration with the students. It's a very exciting opportunity and it's one that I'm really happy that we're able to participate in. Moving on to graphic design, this is Paul Sulelis, department head. And I would encourage you, if you come back and look at this um, presentation and see the department head's names, I'd really encourage you to Google them because they all have, uh, um, uh, either websites of their own or work that's accessible, and it will give you a sense of what they bring to the program. Um, the graphic design program um, begins with a very um, deep inquiry into type, into print, um, that begins in the sophomore year. This is Design Studio 2. Uh, there's a lot of collaborative work as students begin to learn the techniques necessary to uh, express uh, themselves. Uh, there is a, a deep investigation of communication, its importance, its role in society, and its responsibilities in society. So this is a uh, publication work session. Uh, a lot of work is done um, with faculty and with teams of students. Um, your peers at RISD are one of your most valuable resources for feedback and crit. So what you see here is students um, assessing each other's work and preparing to speak about it. Um, this is uh, a visiting artist who is uh, leading students through an exercise where they had to take a page from the New York Times and present all of the information of that page through infographics, but no text. Um, these are often, um, there's very robust roster of visitors that come through most of our departments to do um, either workshops or lectures or um, function as visiting critics. Um, this is the photo room where students learn to take um, high resolution images to be used in poster work. So you learn the lighting and the necessary setups to make those images. And this is the gallery within, it's called the, uh, the GD Commons. So it's a space that the graphic design department uses uh, for meetings, for classes, and then it uh, for senior degree projects, it often becomes either a group gallery, or in this case, this is a senior degree project uh, that's been installed. It's by Kathy Park, and it was last spring. Um, so you can see um, some of the opportunities that students have in this program to uh, take their work from the very beginnings of the concept all the way through to an exhibition. And, and as you will notice, this is not only 2D flat work, uh, the graphic design department has increasingly moved into three-dimensional and spatial work. And that's often very much a part of students' work in the department. And then just finally, this was also a senior degree project at the final installation. Um, I think um, I wanted to show you these two images and the next one because I think they capture the breadth of the work. Uh, one of the things that I think makes us so um, proud of RISD work, but also um, makes us so passionate about it is that student work is very different from one student to another at RISD. Um, students are really encouraged to find their own voice, to pursue their own interests, and, um, and then supported in learning the techniques and um, to be able to achieve, um, you know, what they're trying to achieve. Um, RISD works increasingly with a risograph. It's um, a type of printing that is um, fairly low technology. Uh, in response to some of the other digital technologies and um, AR, VR, augmented reality that the uh, department uses, or um, but it is something that allows students to work quickly, very expressively, and inexpensively to, especially to work within 
um, some of the traditional graphic design avenues of supporting social change and um, and what you could say might be um, moments of revolution in our cultures. One last example, I believe. Oh, it's really hard to know when to stop when you're showing work because there's just so much of it. Um, Moving on to industrial design. Uh, industrial design means many things nowadays, and it and that's true for industrial design at RISD. This is Keeper Nichols, the department head. He is also now the co-director of a new uh, master's degree at RISD uh, that's shared with Brown University. It's a master's in design engineering. Um, the department embraces work that includes. Um, this is a a smart garment. So it's um, wired and it's, um, it's then controlled like many uh, other projects through apps. Um, this is an app that's a um, UX, IX, a user experience based design. Um, I'm gonna show you one more and then stop and talk a little bit about it. And this is a chair um, that a Yifan Wang designed. Um, so in these three projects alone, you see the breadth of industrial design at RISD, but not the full breadth. So we have very classic um, projects that are three-dimensional objects like this chair um, made through uh, techniques that you learn in the wood or the metals or the model shops or the computer labs. Uh, we have work just to go, uh, this is another one, um, this even goes further. This is a mushroom unit. Students uh, have become very interested in alternative materials. So we've had students designing in, in industrial design, designing the units that can grow mushrooms that can then become used for making um, either textiles, clothing, um, other end products out of, um, out of mushroom material. Um, so I think this begins to, give you an idea of kind of what you can do in industrial design. Um, we also take on topics of um, nu nuclear security. Um, and um, yet we still stay very much within the realm of students who are looking for a, uh, an opportunity to make objects that basically make life better. Uh, this is a compilation of projects from a couple of years ago. Um, I think I might've shown this last year too, but I just wanted to show it because, again, because it begins to um, capture some of the breadth, whether it, you're designing new fingertips or um, there are many other um, projects here to support pollinators, to um, you see a sort of classical wood or, and this uh, is an example of prototyping different forms. And that's a picture of the studio in which students are working on that. So every class is a mixture of learning new techniques and exploring new territories. But the classes themselves might range from um, designing bicycles, designing shoes, uh, designing objects. There's a shoe class in process. And this is uh, the Rover. Uh, RISD Rover is a club that operates in relationship with the industrial design uh, department and it's affiliated with other work that the department has been doing for a number of years now and is continuing to develop projects for NASA and the space program. One of the great fun things on RISD campus in the spring is seeing all the Rover um, vehicles being taken out for test runs by the students. Can I catch my breath here for a minute? Um, moving on, interior architecture is the next to last program I'm going to talk about. Our interior architecture program is a little different from other uh, schools in that it's not interior design, it's interior architecture, and it's focused very much on adaptive reuse. So there's a, a sort of deep ethos of sustainability built into the program. And there's also a deep ethos of um, a belief in the importance of interior environments on human well-being. So the department takes on uh, very specific architectural topics. 
Um, but it also moves into some other territories as you're about to see. This is Wolfgang Rudolf, who's um, Rudolf, excuse me, who's the department head. Um, his own practice deals very much with uh, architectural preservation and historical architecture. Um, and he's brought all the attention to all of those aspects um, of architecture into this program. So what you will see ranges from projects like this, uh, exploring the concept of interiority, uh, which could be understood as a built space, a room, a house, or it can also be understood from human experience of being inside. So this uh, is, a number of uh, students here are experimenting with the construction they've done to understand qualities of perception and to actually create perceptual um, experiences. Um, this ties into the department's investigation of augmented uh, reality. So this was the um, department's uh, annual show of senior work from 2020, which is last year, uh, when we could not be uh, that easily all on campus due to the pandemic and the need to social distance. So the department created a way of exhibiting their work through uh, portals of augmented reality. They designed an app that people could download and then they could go through, what you're seeing up here is the RISD Museum, as a virtual site with portals into each student's um, individual project for the year. And now I'm going to just take you through a couple of seniors projects. Um, uh, at RISI, you have the opportunity to do individual study projects, uh, working with a, a faculty advisor. Many students take advantage of that to pursue something they're particularly interested in that doesn't quite fit into the um, some of the other electives that, that you might take. So this is Lily Huo, who did an independent study project um, looking at ancient building methods, uh, revisiting them through uh, contemporary practices and contemporary needs. So these were some of her studies that you're seeing and then a presentation of the final project on the the two-dimensional graphic boards in the background. This was another project by Dasri Dai, who was um, looking at very traditional uh, home space uh, coming from different cultures to find out what uh, she could learn about redesigning um, ICU, intensive care units in hospitals to make them more uh, welcoming, more um, basically hospitable, especially not only for the patient, but for the family who uh, wants to be with patients and uh, observe, help take care of them to overcome some of the isolation and the uh, sense of sterility of um, these units in hospitals. Um, and then this was another project done as an independent study um, that came out of a student's really deep concern about um, her home country and some conditions that she found in an area, Dharavi. Um, so I'm just going to play you a little bit. This was the student who um, had gone to the site and began doing a series of interviews with residents. Um, Dravi is one of the largest um, informal settlements, uh, also sometimes referred to as slums, um, where the lack of, um, of um, toilets, the lack of hygiene infrastructure is a both a, a public health, but also a public safety issue. <laughs> Like anything, suggestion. So um, this is how our project began to play out through a um, a series of on-site uh, participatory um, 
first uh, site uh, research. Um, and then participatory design, working with the residents of Dharavi, um, then a design process of her own to um, begin to propose a new model for public uh, restroom facilities. Um, I, I think this is a really great example of things you can do at RISI that teaches you both research methods um, what, that you will need as you go forward in your own work, um, but also allows you to do that with very strong mentorship by your faculty and, um, and frequently the faculty across the, uh, not only in the department, but across the school. And then finally, I just give you a little appetizer of a program here, uh, of a project here. This was uh, done last year. Um, this was a, uh, and actually a graduate project uh, but I wanted to show it because I think it captured um, where the department is going in many ways. This was uh, this is the Pell Bridge, which is in southern Rhode Island. It's an extremely long, about two mile long bridge and high bridge. Um, and the question is, it's um, what could that bridge be in terms of a human experience uh, to cross it? It's a very stunning sight above the Narragansett Bay. Um, this studio became an interdisciplinary studio between interior architecture and landscape architecture students, where they begin to reimagine the experience of this bridge. This project, um, which I believe is available online if you Google crossing the Pell, um, began to look at the bridge not only as a new experience for pedestrians and bicycles, uh, but also as a way of harvesting energy from the wind that uh, blows up through the Narragansett Bay. I think this is also really interesting um, project to look at um, because frankly, very few students enter RISD being able to produce a visual um, representation like this, this image, but this is drawn using a series of uh, different uh, uh, techniques and different software. And this is the this is where you end up. This isn't where you start when you enter RISD, but this is one of the um, methods of representation that st uh, students develop in their way here. And it is increasingly um, the fact that you end up being able to um, work at a high level of skill by the time you leave RISD is uh, part of what makes RISD students so um, desirable to. Um, um, people who are, hire them when you get out. So in this case, architects and landscape architects um, who are uh, young students leaving the program looking for work, this is part of the skill set that they take with them. I think if you look back at any of the images I've shown, um, a lot of them were from seniors um, in the program and the accomplishment that uh, each student um, reaches at, by the time they are seniors. I'm going to show you one more thing that's a little bit like this project, and that's uh, another example of the interdisciplinary opportunities you have. And I want to start on this image because I don't want you to think that you spend all of your time in the studio, because you do spend a lot of time in studios and in class, but RISD has a lot of opportunities where you're out in the field and um, learning about the world um, there and learning about the ways you can engage in the world. This is a collaborative studio between landscape architecture and sculpture. So this is a mix of undergrad and graduate students. They are looking at ways in which textiles can be deployed um, to assist in um, environmental issues such as flooding. And um, so they're right now working with, um, the man in the foreground is a member of um, a um, Native American tribe. They are looking and learning about classic and traditional willow weaving that has been part of the tribal culture and that has also been used um, to stabilize stream banks um, among, as well as to make basketry. So these are some students here working, learning fundamental willow weaving techniques, and then um, 
I can get my cursor back to the corner. Um, this is an example of the way some of this willow weaving is used um, to do stream bank control and flooding control. So this is a kind of unusual example, and this is very done very early this fall in studio. So I don't know yet where the students will take this work, but I do know that this is a very exciting workshop for them to be out in the field um, learning this technique and also engaging with people who've had a very um, long and traditional uh, engagement with managing um, environmental circumstances. Um, to um, both for in the environment, also to uh, maintain a cultural practice that has been, uh, has occurred for uh, decades and generations and to bring it into future uses. So I'm gonna conclude there and leave us some time for questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing and go back to the webinar here. Um, hope I didn't talk too fast for everybody. I, I see some questions have come up. Uh, excellent. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Sherry. I really appreciate it. I know um, I know everybody got a lot out of that presentation. It was fantastic to see such wonderful work um, and a wide variety of it. We did get some great questions. I made sure to save a few. Um, Let's see here. Okay, one question is, would a bachelor's degree be enough to open your own practice in interior architecture or is a master's required? Uh, there are a few answers to that. <laughs> um, a bachelor's degree can be. Um, it depends if you want to be uh, registered. Um, interior architecture, and interior design is a little bit like architecture in that you have, um, there's a set of qualifications that allows you different certifications, but many, many people do have a bachelor's degree and then open their own interior. Um, there, I, I don't wanna go into deep into details, but there are distinctions between calling yourself an architect and a designer. Um, many people with a bachelor's are designers. Uh, it's a formal terminology. It doesn't really limit the type of work you do. But yes, you can do that. Um, people often go back to do a master's because they are looking to add to what they already know, especially if they've had a bachelor's and they go out and work for a while. Going back to a master's is a way of kind of um, jumping back in the deep end of the pool, you could say, to um, gain some new skills that you might uh, have come to realize you would like. Great. Um, all right, let me get to the another question that we have here. Um, hold on a moment, okay. Um, okay, what is the difference between interior design and, and interior architecture? Really? Uh, that's a good question. Um, a lot of interior design programs focus more on furnishings, on interior finishes, um, window treatments, textiles. Um, interior architecture takes it a little bit further into the structure itself. So you will be learning how to build space. You'll be learning about heating, cooling, ventilation systems. You will be uh, learning about how to create phenomenal effects through windows through lighting that's natural or artificial lighting. And I think really importantly, you'll be learning about the ways in which buildings are more sustainable or less. As I said earlier, this program has a strong emphasis on adaptive reuse. So what that means is working with existing uh, building fabric. Let's just, for example, say um, that could be a historic building or that could be a warehouse and both may be converted to another use, uh, which is in inherently in many cases more sustainable than new building, but it does involve structural intervention. It does involve a rethinking of the, um, the systems of the building. And so that's the difference really. A lot of interior design programs do not go into that territory. They stay more into the territory of uh, working within existing walls or minor adjustments to them. Uh, 
Um, I can't hear you, so I don't know. Sorry about that. I just realized I was <laughs> muted. I didn't want to interrupt your answer at all. So um, for graphic design, what are the most common applications or softwares or programs used for many of the digital works? Uh, well, that changes. Um, of course, there's like Adobe Suite, all of the, the normal things that um, people have come to understand. Um, but there's increasingly um, other technologies um, and kind of there are the program includes workshops in the different software that you use. And so that is adjusted as the program goes along. So if if there are new technologies that want to be added, they are uh, introduced in that way or introduced in class. But there are students that also kind of invent what they're using. I went to an amazing uh, demonstration last year where a student had decided he wanted to design a uh, type that could move that was three-dimensional. And so he learned to code so that he could actually design the, the um, program that would allow him to do this. And that's becoming increasingly common. And there is a um, concentration at RISD in computation and culture. And um, so students who are really inclined to doing that um, can follow that. The, there's a small set of required courses. And then there are a number of courses that are tagged to be part of the concentration. So you can follow that path or you could follow a path that um, uses more, it sticks within the conventional software that's used in the, um, the, the program. But I, I don't wanna list all of the software because they're really different softwares for um, focusing on book design versus um, um, digital design for screen viewing versus different apps and um, I think though, if you go to one of the um, admissions events with graphic design, that you could learn a lot more about that there. Great. Um, okay, the next question we have. Um, does, does a graphic design department have resources for generative computational art? Which you may have kind of answered that a bit with the programs that you were, and how they change, but. But yeah, you know, gen resources for generative computational art. Um, I would defer that to them. Um, mm -hmm. I would talk with them. Um, I am not a graphic designer. Um, I know that they are certainly, um, there are students who work in that way, uh, but I can't really tell you with great precision about how they're supported. So can I just say uh, better to ask that of the graphic design faculty? Yes, and you guys can go to our website and you can actually look into all of our majors and um, on each page, it does show contact information for, um, for all of our departments. Uh, let's see. Well, this is an interesting question because I know we have the option to, to double major here at RISD, but is it possible to double major while studying architecture? Because that is on its own already a five-year program. <laughs> um, well, that's ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> I think people have done it. Um, what I find with double majors is that it's really better for students to get their sophomore year in a major under their belts and then begin to add I really seriously consider the other major and map it out. Uh, the architecture degree is a five-year professional bachelor's of architecture. So that what that means is at the end of that five years, you're eligible to do your um, internship and then take your licensure exams. Um, but it is a five-year program. So adding a second major typically means adding another year. Um, so you can do that, uh, but I would say if you think you might want to do that, that's something to work out in your sophomore year as an architecture student and really carefully map out the path through there. Great. Um, someone was wondering, um, can you describe a, des I don't know, a design critique session and, and basically how does it differ from a fine art critique session? Oh, that's a great question. Um, in some ways it doesn't. 
Um, but I would say that across the division, there are very different uh, styles of critique. Even in the same department, you can have a number of different critiques, um, styles of critique. Furniture, for instance, um, it's typically very discursive. It's all students are encouraged to develop a critical vocabulary and um, the work is viewed it's three-dimensional work. Obviously, it tends to be reviewed in a space with critics, but um, in a conversation with the students. Um, that is a little different than, for instance, a classic architecture critique, which um, might involve a whole panel of visiting practitioners or academics who come in uh, and join the faculty. Students present the work. It's then discussed by that uh, panel of critics. And then the discussion is open to the students. Um, there are very few critiques where the students don't participate, but occasionally uh, there are some that are set up as juries, so that that means the, the work is presented to a panel the, and the panel uh, discusses it. Um, but there's also always um, other um, formal and informal ways of small group critique, one-on-one -on -one desk crits with your instructor um, or with a visiting instructor um, or small group um, pinups is uh, are common where a small group of students will pin up work. I think you actually saw that in action in the graphic design, uh, one of those images where the students work was all on the wall and they were um, uh, talking about it as a group of students. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but I would say there's a real diversity of critique um, and that the maybe the one thing I would say distinguishes the design critiques from the fine arts is that there's uh, frequently the design departments are taking on a project that while it is conceptual and speculative frequently, it also is oriented toward an application. And so the discussion of how it performs in that application enters the critique in a way that I find often does not in um, say a, a discussion in painting or sculpture. Um, the work is not uh, usually assessed there in terms of how it, it operates um, in the way that say a chair might operate or the way that a, um, an industrial design project, such as a, a new design for a bicycle. Uh, the critique for that would obviously take on um, critiquing how well it worked, right? Um, Great. Um, well, now this kind of touched, I, I saw this question pop up and it does relate to what you were just talking about with double majoring for architecture. Um, they I were wondering if I take a double major in interior architecture and architecture where a lot of the elements overlap, do you think I would still need to study for an extra year, which? Well, there's really only one option in architecture, which is the five-year B arc. Um, yes. Whereas the interior architecture program is a four-year program. Uh, I'm sure almost everything is possible, RISD. So I'm sure you could navigate that territory, but um, I don't think you could make it shorter than five years. And it's um, it would all depend on the path that you mapped out with your advisors and the department heads. Um, this is a, a question about apparel design. Do apparel design majors often go on to start their own brands directly after graduation? Yes, a number of them do. And what I would say is it's, it, um, the fashion industry is changing and very quickly and enormously as we speak. And so there's um, there are many ways now that designers can operate making uh, small batch collections, um, uh, having a collection that is made one garment at a time as they're ordered. Um, you know, really the industry and the way clothing is produced is uh, becoming a, a whole new uh, practice. So yes, a number of designers um, who graduate from apparel in RISD have done that. Uh, they also have sometimes done that because they don't um, necessarily follow a track of going out and producing a collection. 
Some of them work with the film or the television industry, and they are uh, fundamentally designing costume. Or, um, others are working in, they go to, for instance, perhaps designing for uh, hospital garments. Uh, so they're just, there's a very broad path. Others do, however, go and, um, you know, target um, work after school uh, with a, um, a fashion house or with a, a larger um, uh, company. Great. Um, let's see. When majoring in interior architecture, will I also have a background on interior design in my studies? Um, if what you mean by that is, will you have an opportunity to look at furnishing, look at lighting, look at um, some of the more classic uh, elements of interior design? Yes, you will. Um, but I think it's important to realize you will also be getting an education in some of the more um, tectonic architectural elements of the practice. Excellent. And, and I just wanna add something in here. This is an area where it, there becomes some really um, interesting cross fertilizations between, for instance, the RISD textile department, which is a fine arts department and interior architecture um, or between um, ceramics and interior architecture. There are kind of endless possibilities of the way um, there are formal uh, collaborative studios, but then there are also many students who uh, forge their own path. They will take electives in textiles or in glass or in uh, ceramics um, and then translate, pull that back into the work that they're doing in their major in interior architecture or architecture or something else. Uh, let's see, here we have, um, are there any coding or comp sci focused courses available at RISD? Uh, there are some coding courses. It's um, also students can take, uh, can cross register with Brown. Absolutely. Um, Some of these questions are very similar to each other. So I just wanna make sure to bring up one that hasn't really been addressed yet. Um, okay, well, this one says that for about graphic design, but regarding the graphic design transfer portfolio, should I include my graphic work that showcases my design planning skills or should it be more about the graphic visual? Um, I, I would uh, try and balance it. I think your design planning skills are really important. Um, you know, the RISD is very dedicated to um, developing critical thinking and to um, students who really embrace process as a in, in, in necessary element of um, critical thinking. So yes, include process. It is always good to see process. Uh, most of the work that you show should be finished pieces, but it's wonderful to see your critical thinking skills and process. Um, let's see. Someone was wondering about 3D animation in virtual reality. Somebody well, yeah. Um, we do have a film animation and video department. It's a fine arts department. Um, graphic designers, interior architects, even landscape architects, architects now are increasingly looking at animation as a necessary element in their skills. And so I would say that it's, um, there are many opportunities to learn and to develop it. Um, but that the um, film animation and video departments, and to a certain extent, illustration now uh, are taking on animation in a way that is more focused um, than the other departments. Um, what do you look for in an architecture portfolio? Um, can I ask you a question in return? Are you asking as somebody who would be entering as a freshman or a transfer? <laughs> That's a great question. And on that note, um, for anybody who is applying as a first year student, 
even if you know that you're going into architecture and they just said as a freshman. So um, it'd probably be helpful still to learn as a transfer student what, what an architecture portfolio, um, you know, what you're looking for. But any student who is applying as a first year student, even if you know what department you wanna go into, um, you are applying to the experimental and foundation studies program. All freshmen, that's the full freshman year for um, our, our students. Um, and there you study drawing, design, spatial dynamics, and it's a great way to build a strong foundation before you pursue your, um, your major. And sophomore year is like the foundational year of your major. So um, if you have experience, if you have architecture experience or graphic design experience, you are more than welcome to include that in your portfolio, but it should be a variety of foundational skills. If you're applying as a transfer student, then you're applying to a particular department. Um, so yeah, what would look good in an app uh, for an architecture portfolio? For anyone curious? Um, well, I also wanted to add about the foundation years. You're taught by faculty who have expertise in um, all, all different disciplines. So there are uh, people who are architects by training who will be part of the foundations teaching team. There are graphic designers. There are fine artists uh, from the different disciplines. So it's a very rich um, learning environment. And um, statistically, more people who think they're going to be architects when they come in end up being architects. But it's also quite common at RISD for students to enter the foundation year and discover something about art and design that they didn't know and about and fall in love with it and change course. So. I, you know, I try and counsel anybody coming in at the, um, as a first year student to do it with a really open mind and a lot of curiosity, because um, you, you just don't know what you'll discover. Uh, but if you're coming in as an architect, I would say as a first year student, um, your, your capacity to observe, to um, demonstrate your observational abilities through a medium, um, your ability to communicate the way you, why you're interested and engaged in art and design through work. I, I think that is more important than almost anything else, especially if you want to be an architect. Uh, your, your analytical abilities, um, the way to communicate that you've been able to analyze space, that you are beginning to grapple with ways to represent space um, or structure, the more you can do that, I think, the better. Um, so we're about to wrap up. We would have, I guess we have time for maybe one more question if you do. Um, and someone just asked if you could You've already given a great presentation on all of these departments, but if you can kind of um, elaborate a little bit more on the apparel design department, which okay, is quickly in 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 two minutes essentially. Two minutes. Or less. Okay, <laughs> I would I, I I think I'll do it by comparing it to other programs. Um, it's a par It's called apparel for a reason rather than fashion, and I think that the. Um, the program is, is distinguished by an appetite to really look at how apparel functions as an artistic expression, but also as a societal and culture, cultural expression of in, and inquiry into identity, into questions of how you inhabit this world ethically and sustainably and yet joyfully and creatively. So I think if you think about that little film I showed you and you looked at how different those projects were, um, the different relationship to materials, knit or woven, braided, or um, many students now in apparel actually spend a lot of time making their material, um, investigating new concepts of, um, why we wear what we wear. I, I think that that is one of the most exciting things about our apparel department right now is that it's not in service of a fashion industry that is increasingly, um, and I think, um, you know, having to investigate and challenge its own ideas around, um, 
you know, their um, use of material, how clothing is made and by whom, and issues of social equity in the production of clothing. Um, I think, you know, our apparel department is really taking that on and trying to figure out what's the future of fashion in a world that has a lot of challenges. Um, and it and they're doing it in a way that is, is like wildly creative and um, wildly supportive of individual voices. I hope that helps. I, it's hard to capture in two minutes, but I gave it my best. You did it. You did it in exactly two minutes. That was very impressive. Thank you so much, Sherry. And um, we are now at four o'clock, which is the end of our, our program here. I want to thank you all for attending. Um, if we weren't able to get to your questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out to admissions. You can call us. You can um, email us at admissions at risd.edu. Um, and also, if you have department specific questions, please also feel free to re reach out to those particular departments. Um, but again, we are so happy that you could join us today. Um, and Sherry, again, thank you for that fantastic presentation. It was wonderful. Um, and I, everyone, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It. Bye, thanks guys. <laughs> Excellent.